Hey guys, Nerion here. Various gaming companies are struggling with their DEI departments. I know, crazy, who could have possibly seen that coming? We're gonna talk about Microsoft today, the company behind Xbox, and how they've now announced that they're laying off their DEI department after realizing that it had a negative effect on the financial performance of the company and its games. What a shocker. And speaking of DEI games, we will take another look at the Suicide Squad game. A game that killed not just the Justice League, but Rocksteady as well. And they have now become so desperate to get people to play the game that they're even giving it away for free. And they even gave in and brought back a fan favorite Harley Quinn costume. Yet of course not without censoring the crap out of it first. So we've got some interesting stories to cover. Let's start with the big news first. As Business Insider reports, Microsoft laid off a DEI team and its lead wrote an internal email blasting how DEI is no longer business critical. Microsoft laid off a diversity, equity and inclusion team, citing changing business needs according to an email. Also reported on by IGN who wrote, Microsoft DEI lead blasts company in internal email after team is reportedly laid off. They're calling DEI no longer business critical. As if it ever was business critical. Funny how they went from DEI's absolutely business critical to now saying DEI is no longer business critical. In reality, it never even was business critical. This idiotic idea of limiting companies and artists' creative freedom and forcing them to make a certain percentage of its staff and of the characters in each game be people of color, forcing them to have a certain percentage be women, a certain percentage be LGBTQ people, have a certain percentage be disabled and so on. And they actually thought that that increase in guidelines, rules and regulations would somehow have positive effects. That having more rules to follow would somehow make the games better. That hiring people not based on talent or experience, but based on factors like race, ethnicity, gender and sexuality would somehow make products better and companies more successful. That's madness, that's crazy. And discriminating people just because they're male or white or straight is technically even illegal. And yet that's what they've been doing. And many companies of course are still doing it. But let's first read that IGN article to see what's exactly going on at Microsoft and why they suddenly decided to close their DEI department. So IGN writes and I quote, Microsoft is reportedly shuttering one of its diversity, equity and inclusion teams, according to an internal email sent by the team's leader to a significant number of Microsoft staff last week, in which the lead also accuses the company's executive leadership of investigated and evidence discrimination, harassment and toxicity. The email, first reported by Business Insider and corroborated by IGN, was sent by the former lead of one of Microsoft's key DEI teams. In it, they stated their role in team were eliminated due to changing business needs as of July 1st, 2024. IGN understands that the individual and a second person on their team were both laid off, but was not able to reach the sender for comment. The email goes on to assert that DEI programs are in danger not just at Microsoft, but across all businesses. The email goes on to praise the work of DEI teams at Microsoft, saying that impossible mountains were moved during their tenure, and celebrating the brilliant, ethical and world-class strategists at the company, helping to make the world a better place. However, they also accused executive leadership of investigated and evidence discrimination, harassment and toxicity directed toward them during their time at the company. In a statement shared with Business Wire and since shared with IGN, spokesperson Jeff Jones said, Our D&I commitments remain unchanged. Our focus on diversity and inclusion is unwavering and we are holding firm on our expectations, prioritizing accountability and continuing to focus on this work. Microsoft is just one out of numerous tech and gaming companies that made major commitments to diversity, equity and inclusion programs in the last four years, particularly in the wake of the 2020 murder of George Floyd and the summer of Black Lives Matter protests that followed. Microsoft in particular unveiled a racial equality initiative, pledging to increase representation, invest an additional 150 million in diversity and inclusion and double the number of black and African American leaders in its US divisions by 2025. However, in the years since, a number of tech companies such as Google and Meta have begun to make significant cuts to the DEI programs they launched in 2020. Earlier this year, Microsoft laid off 1,900 staff from its video game divisions and closed both Tango Gameworks and Arcane Austin. Last year, the wider company laid off over 10,000 individuals. IGN has reached out to both the email sender and Microsoft for comment, but did not hear back in time for publication." End quote. Wow, now that's funny. They talk about their employees being brilliant, ethical and world-class strategists, and yet announce that they're being laid off. 
They talk about how their DEI commitments remain unchanged and how their focus on diversity and inclusion is unwavering and yet are firing thousands of their DEI employees. Now how does that make any sense you might think? Well, the reason is because it was all performative. They actually didn't give a shit. They only began proclaiming their efforts to increase diversity after the Judge Floyd and BLM protests happened in 2020. And yet now, a few years later, they're firing those diversity hires again that they hired back then. They wanted to virtue signal to boost their their image among the public and among investors. They didn't start those measures because they suddenly decided to care about black people. They only acted to care about diversity to keep their money or in best case to increase their money. That was their only goal. They put out those virtue signaling statements on how important diversity and inclusion is to them. Like earlier this year when Microsoft added a section to their website called Product Inclusion Action – Help Customers Feel Seen, where they, among other things, told developers to avoid curvy female characters. You know, because those would allegedly be harmful to real life women. We had the whole Stellar Blade drama around the same time, where they argued that Eve looks too attractive and that that's a problem. Microsoft gave devs a checklist to pay attention to when creating a game. And in it they had a section about negative gender stereotypes, where they asked developers questions like Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? Exaggerated body proportions is their term for curvy bodies, which is a no-go for them. As if Microsoft would actually give a shit about how a female character is depicted in a game. Maybe some of their developers do, but Microsoft as a whole? No. Same goes for all of their other performative actions or statements. And yet I saw people who actually believed them. That all those measures they announced were actually being done out of goodwill. You had people bending over backwards and defending those companies being like, thank you billion dollar company that you care so much about my social issues. I can't believe some people are this stupid. They are the perfect consumers to take advantage of. And honestly, if they are this stupid, they deserve to be taken advantage of. If you tell people that and they still don't believe you, then that's on them. If they then lose their money on that, I don't care. But sadly, it doesn't only affect those people. Them being ignorant and stupid sadly affects everyone else as well, because it has a negative effect on the whole industry. Because while some companies actually don't care and only do it as a performative stunt to increase profit, others actually do care, or they get convinced by those virtue signaling companies to actually believe in that garbage. That's why consulting firms like Sweet Baby Incorporated even exist, cause I believe that its employees are actually convinced of their crazy identity politics. And then those political activists at that company get hired to work on high profile games like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And yet, because they're unqualified and only care about DEI and identity politics, the game didn't end up good. It's barely even a game. It's a garbage story and gameplay that's a maximum of 10 hours long, and yet costs full price and has plenty of expensive microtransactions and a battle pass on top of that. I don't know how they can make it more obvious that they had no interest in making a good game and only wanted to make some quick cash with the brand name of those DC characters and it being the return of the beloved Arkham franchise. It's only been about the money and the platform this game would give them to push their ideology. And boy, did they use that. They race swapped that shot, made Wonder Woman the only Justice League member to receive an honorable death, and even ridiculed and then killed off the Arkham Batman in his final appearance, among tons of other things. One of which being how they ruined Harley Quinn's character. I dislike her so much in this game. It's supposed to be the same Harley from the previous games, and yet she definitely isn't. Just like the game spent its time shitting all over the legacy of those DC characters and the Arkham franchise, Harley spent the game ridiculing her former version. A version of her that was much more likable, much more interesting, much more attractive and much more popular than whatever the hell they did with the new one. Her whole design was toned down and uglified. Even her outfits from the previous games look like a downgrade here. It's okay, we get it, you don't want her to look attractive. But even graphically it looks worse than Arkham Knight, despite that game being a decade old. And yet those developers are becoming more and more pathetic. The one Harley Quinn skin that they refused to add to the game and even made fun of in the game itself because of it being too sexualized according to them has now been added to the game. You would think, wow great, a win for the community. That is, if you were to forget for a minute with what kind of scumbags we're dealing with here. They made it available for purchase and yet censored the hell out of it. Cause again, we can't have female characters looking attractive or exaggerated as those companies would say. And understandably, the DC and the gaming communities are pissed about that. Shout out to Demiga, cause he delivered some great and entertaining coverage of the issue with the costume, summing up my thoughts on this nicely as well. 
Rocksteady is so fucking sad that to try get people to play this game again, or for the most part, try to get people to play this game for the first time, they literally added the one skin that they actually had Sweet Baby removed from the Arkham series, in which Harley, Harley Quinn, openly explained her disgust with this outfit in the damn story. But these hypocrites, these desperate, money-hungry booty lickers, went back on their word and added it to the damn game. There's nothing wrong with eating booty, by the way. I mean, as long as you love her. But they censored the goddamn hell out of the outfit too. I guess they didn't want to fully commit to the bag this time. Did you think that this meant that you're still holding on to a shred of dignity? No, nigga. This makes you look even more desperate. This just screams to me, we didn't want to do this, but I feel like we have to. Think about it like this. This move was very counterintuitive. They added a suit that they think is over-sexualized, but then added it to their game and covered it up. So in their mind, the reason why people liked looking at Harley like this in the first place was because she was showing off the cleavage, right? So what makes them think that if they cover it up, we're going to want to buy this? What sense does that make? Oh, sorry, I forgot. Sweet Baby Inc. only shares one brain cell between all of them. They're really trying to pull a Sony Stellar Blade with this outfit. A game that's allegedly made for mature audiences, but yet you censor the titties that most men and women see on a daily basis. Y'all have got your priorities all the way messed up. I'll be awaiting my refund as soon as you send out your apology letter. That sums it up pretty well. We can have Harley murdering a bunch of kids, but we can under no circumstances have her showing even the slightest bit of cleavage. And something else, a fun fact if you will, and yet another reason why Suicide Squad is a disrespectful and inaccurate game made by people that don't care, is that the outfit that Harley wore in Arkham Knight was one that she made herself. So it's something that she wore on her own accord and choice, which makes it nonsensical that she would act disgusted by it in Suicide Squad. But again, it's not like the devs cared about that. I'm not even sure if they actually played the previous games, cause it doesn't seem that way. The game failed, that's a fact at this point. The player numbers hover around 200, which means it lost 98% of its original audience already, despite this supposed to be a live service game that people were supposed to play for many years to come. They're so desperate at this point, that they're not just somewhat adding fan favorite costumes, but that they even gave the game away for free on Prime Day to get people to play it. And yet, looking at the player count, it clearly didn't save the game. I'm telling you, they will start giving away Suicide Squad and PlayStation Plus, Xbox Game Pass etc soon. They're already starting to give it away for free here and there, despite it not even being out a year. But that's what happens with games that put a big emphasis on identity politics and DEI initiatives. Rocksteady and Microsoft are learning this the hard way right now. If they even learn from this at all. We'll see about that, I guess. Cause you can't trust any company these days, especially not billion dollar ones. But I will keep you updated on that. So if you enjoyed the video and want to support me and get the message out there, make sure to like the video, to share it, to leave your thoughts on the situation in the comments and to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate any kind of support. So make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter for updates as well. You'll find me under Nerion or by clicking the link in the video description. But with that said, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll hopefully see you again in the next one. Till then, take care.